How to cope with your baby crying with child sleep specialist Andrea Grace. Does your baby cry an awful lot during the night? Is she also very fretful during the day? If she is and it's all getting very stressful, don't worry, there are things that you can do to find out why she's crying and also to help you know how to cope with it. Step one. Try to establish why your baby is crying. Is she hungry? Try offering a feed. Even if she's not yet due for one, she may be having a growth spurt and need a little extra. If you feed her during the night, however, try not to allow her to fall asleep over her feed. Does she have wind? Try holding her upright, supporting her firmly against your shoulder and applying firm circular strokes or gently patting her lower back until she manages to either bring up or pass her wind. Is she overtired? Try putting her down to sleep and leaving her alone to settle. Sometimes overhandling a baby can just be plain irritating for her. Is she too hot or too cold? Look for signs that she's sweating or cold. Feel her tummy to get a rough idea of her body temperature. Check the room temperature. It should be around 18 degrees Celsius. Also, during the day, check that she or the pram or cot are not placed in direct sunlight. Does her nappy need changing? Is she in pain? Check that her clothing is comfortable and not over tight and then check her for nappy rash. If these things seem to be okay, have a look at her gums to see if she's cutting a tooth. If necessary, you can give her a safe dose of infant painkiller. If she's hot and or crying inconsolably, the nature of her cry is different to normal or if she is listless, you will need to seek immediate medical help. Common medical reasons for excessive crying at this age include colic, teething, nappy rash, or earache or ear infections. These conditions, although difficult to cope with at the time, are temporary and they do respond well to medication. There are, of course, times when your baby's excessive crying can be a sign of a more serious condition and it can't be stressed highly enough that if she seems in any way different to her normal self and she's crying excessively, then you really do need to seek immediate medical help. Step two, what to do if you can't find a reason for her crying. If, after all the checks, she continues to cry, try the following. Place her on her side with one hand in the small of her back and one against her tummy. Gently rock her to and fro until she resettles, then place her back onto her back. If that doesn't work, try rocking her in your arms, but as soon as she begins to calm down and become sleepy, place her back into her cot and comfort her there. Offer her a milk feed, but do not allow her to fall asleep while sucking. As soon as she's had enough or is starting to become sleepy, finish the feed, wind her well and then place her back into the cot. Comfort her there if you need to until she has gone to sleep. Step 3. If all else fails. Don't be afraid to hold and comfort your baby if that calms her. Try not to worry about losing your own sleep. You are stronger than you think you are. This is temporary and your baby needs you right now. Allow others to comfort her if they offer and try not to feel undermined if they succeed. Sometimes it's just the change of scene that helps. Remember that your baby is not crying on purpose. If you find yourself getting angry, Put her in a safe place and leave her on her own for a few minutes whilst you walk away. Have a little weep, take some deep breaths or telephone someone for moral support. When you feel calm again, you can return to her. Talk to your family, partner, health visitor or GP if you feel that you're not coping. Ring the Crisis Helpline. This is an organisation set up to support and advise the parents of crying babies. Remember, your child's crying might be difficult to cope with at the moment, but it's not going to last forever.
as soon as she learns how to communicate with you in other ways, things are going to get better.